Big Bang make a fantastic robot puppet out of milk cartons. Meet the man who is dying to turn the world a lovely shade of purple. And sing like a bird with our dead simple bird callers. Puzzle for you. Violet, I have here in my pocket a cylinder with a message written on it. What is that message? The Big Bang. Yeah, but can you read all three words at the same time? Well, no, because it's a cylinder and they're written round it. OK, you can do it using this bottle of lemonade. I see. Well, maybe if I used it as a lens and... Well, no, I can hardly see it at all now, actually. There is a cunning solution to this puzzle and I'll tell it to you at the end of the programme. Not singing, Violet. You know what we need? A bird caller. Right. Here you go, V. I reckon if I blow in this tube, then the air between the yoghurt pots will vibrate and it should make a sort of bird sound. A seagull! <laughs> nah, I reckon it has to be a songbird. OK, Gareth, this'll do it. The slot in this tube makes it work like a whistle, so when I spin it round my head, the wind will rush through it and we'll get the sound of a songbird. Give it a go. OK. Is it working? Not yet. It's singing! Uh, no, I'm sorry, Violet. That's me. Bit of spit, on a bit of polystyrene, rub it on a glass and... Is it working? Nah. I don't know why the bird isn't singing. Why is that then? It's not real. Oh, yeah, right. Having problems with your problem, Ernest? Is that superior scientific brain aching? Here are two things about brains. Can you tell which one is the big fib? Fact or fib? The size of your brain isn't really important. The brain of the famous scientist Albert Einstein only weighed one and a quarter kilograms. 
much less than the weight of the average brain, and yet good old Einstein was a genius. Fact or fib? You have billions of brain cells in your head, but when you become an adult, they start to die off. In fact, you lose over half your brain cells by the time you reach 40. So, which is the big fib? Make your choice now. Well, Einstein's brain was tiny, so the big fibber is earnest. Adults lose a few brain cells, but not enough to really matter. And some of the remaining cells grow bigger. Of course, some people's brain cells don't grow as big as others. Greetings, Violet. Greetings, Gareth. How did you know it was me? <laughs> it was a square head and metallic voice that gave it away. What do you think of my <laughs> robot, then? Yeah, that's great. Let's have a look at it. Have a go. Turn the handle on the back. All right, yeah. Oh, look, the arms go up and down and the mouth open. Do you like him? I love it. He's yours. Thanks. I'm going to make another one. Before he was a robot, my robot was, in fact, two milk cartons. A little one and a big one. Now, take the big milk carton and cut it so you've got a pair of flaps like that at the top. Then you need a pencil. Put the pencil inside the carton. Line it up with the middle of the bottom of the carton. Take some modelling clay and push so you've made a hole in the bottom. <laughs> Next, you'll need a piece of garden cane, slightly longer than your big milk carton. And then take a piece of card and scored on the underside so you can fold it into a sort of triangle. Now, you'll note that there's a couple of notches in the top. You'll see why in a second. Take a great lump of modelling clay, bang it in the middle, take your garden cane, jam it in there, close the whole thing up, glue it or tape it together till you've got something like that. And what you've got there is a piston. Then take a sweet tube and cut it to a length that fits just inside your milk carton. Then you'll need to make two circular cardboard discs with holes on them just off centre and glue them on the end of your tube. Now, if you look, I've actually made a line through the centre of that hole that I made and line it up with a line on your sweet tube. Do the same the other end. Then, when you shove a pencil through the thing, the whole thing lines up perfectly because what you've made is a cam. <laughs> Next, cut a slit and a hole on opposite sides of your milk carton. So it's time to start assembling your robot. So take the piston and push it through that hole that you made earlier on with a pencil. Then take your cam and insert that. Then turn the whole thing up that way and glue it to a good solid base. Look here, I've got two bits of lolly sticks stuck to the top. They're acting as sort of pivots. And two more lolly sticks joined by a piece of string glued to the garden cane. Now, if I turn this round, you can see the mechanism that I make because I've actually put a window in the back of mine. Watch what happens when I turn that handle. The cam turns round and pushes that piston up and the weight of the modelling clay pulls it down again. So what you get is these lolly sticks going up and down. The robot said it's made out of one of these styrofoam containers that you get baked potatoes in because they come with really good hinges. And it's glued to that small milk carton that I mentioned earlier on, remember that? Now look, I've cut a section out here and a slot there and done the same on the opposite side. Now this is so when you assemble the whole thing together, you put the garden cane through a hole that you've made in the top and these grooves in the side actually act as guides for the lolly sticks which are going to be his arms. The head goes up and down as well because the garden cane pushes the top bit of the container up but to make sure that it comes down properly on the inside I've added some weight and underneath it a piece of card so that the garden cane doesn't poke its way through the styrofoam. Everything else is just decoration. If you look at my finished robot here, 
He's got straws for antennae, his eyes are bottle tops, and his hands and arms, well, they're just plastic forks. Now, you don't have to make a robot. Check this. Look, a rather cool crow. If you missed anything, all the details are on the Big Bang website. <laughs> A hundred and fifty years ago, Britain was grim. There were two big problems. First, everything was in black and white. A grey day, Master Syrup Cup. A grey day. Dull times, Mr. Speely Wally. Dull times. Ah! Secondly, people kept dropping dead from malaria, a disease spread by mosquitoes. Meet William Perkin. All right, how's you going? All right. He realised a big idea was needed. He worked late into the night, trying to make a malaria cure out of gooey waste. Back then, houses were lit by gas. Gas is made from coal and leaves behind lots of sticky goo called coal tar. Hey, tar, love. People didn't know what it was, so they just threw it away. Perkins thought coal tar should be full of interesting chemicals. I'll bet this stuff is full of loads of really interesting chemicals. So he tried to separate them, hoping he might discover a useful medicine for malaria. Oh, look! It's turned into a lovely reddish powder. Then, when he mixed the powder with wine... Oh, love it, it's gold everywhere. Never mind, I'll mop it up. Oh, look! I've made a lovely purpley liquid. I wonder if it's any use. Indeed it was. Perkin had invented the first artificial colour. Until this moment, all the colours in the world had been made from natural ingredients. But natural dyes had problems. Only a few things produced colours which would actually stick to cloth. For instance, a rather in famous they go. blue dye... In they go. ..called indigo... In they go. ..was made from mashed up leaves. Bright colours were even more difficult to achieve. A red dye called cochineal was made from crushing up thousands upon thousands of... Ow! ..a particular type of beetle. Even more disgusting than that was a purple dye called murex. Now, murex was made by collecting the mucus secretions of a certain type of sea creature. In other words, murex was made from clam snot. Now, collecting enough leaves, beetles and clam snot was a very expensive business, so only very posh people could afford to wear bright colours. Everyone else wore grey. But because Perkins' new purple dye was made from coal tar, from waste, he could make it cheaply. He forgot all about malaria and made a fortune selling the purple dye he called mauve. Happy Mauve Day, Master Frisbeetle. <laughs> Get a mauve on, <laughs> Mistress Throttle Bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Perkins' big idea of making stuff from icky waste gave us colours, perfumes, medicines, in fact, the entire chemical industry. Now that's what we call a big idea. <laughs> Unfortunately, he never did find a cure for malaria. <laughs> completely stumped by Gareth's puzzle. He reckoned it was possible to read the three words on this tube at the same time using a bottle of lemonade. And anyway, where is that lemonade? Uh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Any ideas, then? Um, only that you could have saved some of that for me. What's oh, the answer? I'm terribly sorry. Well, the answer actually is an empty bottle of lemonade. Pop that tube into this bottle of lemonade, mm -hmm. right? Grab the bottle by its neck, mm -hmm. hold it upright, and give that a good spin like so that. the tube, that's it, swings around on the inside of the bottle. What can you see? It says the Big Bang. You see, what's happening here that Violet is spinning the thing so quickly that Big and Bang have appeared before the word the has faded from view. So you're able to read all three words, the whole message, at the same time. And there's lots of other good puzzles on our website. Along with details of everything else we've made on today's show. That's it for now. See you next time on... The, the Big, Big Bang! Bang. Good, eh? In the next Big Bang, make your own film set, complete with erupting volcano. Plus, the story of how we tamed fire, eventually. 
and a machine that helps you decide what to do. 